Brother Green was there, and Brother Danny was there, and who else went with it? Brother Jerry and myself, and my, what a wonderful, wonderful over to Oak Glen, and wonderful time, about 30 men praying there this morning, and uh, we just had a great, great time, and love you too, brother, you just come on there, love you too, praying for you, God bless you, and uh, well, uh, it was just good to feel the presence and the power of God and watch God manifest himself all the filled up two or three different times. And, you know, I think some people get in a rut. Some people, it looks like this thing has made them hungry. And think, after you do anything for 30 days, you know what happens? It becomes a habit. You just do it for 30 days, that's it. And I, I think some of our folks have gotten a habit of rut. And maybe the raw before all this started, but I was hoping this might move us closer to God. And uh, you pray that the Lord would get a hold of hearts and get a hold of lives, and and uh, people might get see the need to be in the house of God, be the people of God. And uh, let me just make a few announcements. Remember, uh, remember the 26th, uh, 27th of June, we're going to have work day at the camp, and this is going to be uh, over at Tri City Baptist Camp. If you got a weed eater, we're going to be mowing. We're going to be doing some work there. So if you can help, uh, they've got a. If you can operate, if you you uh, you can operate a skag, one of those mowers, they've got one over there. I think they've got maybe two mowers. And so we're going to try to get it cleaned up. So if you can do that, uh, there'll be other churches coming in. Brother Sykes Church will be coming in. I think maybe a couple other churches will be coming in, and we'll just get everything ready for the camp. And I'm excited about that, looking forward to God blessing. Remember, it's going to be the 10th, uh, the 6th to the 10th. So that's going to be a July, the 6th to the 10th. And we'll have a choir every night. And they'll be meeting there about 7, 7.30. The service starts. And so that'll be with Brother Ralph Sexton, Brother Greg Lentz will be leading the singing. And so we'll be doing that. And then let me mention also, uh, we're, we're going to be having our, in July, the 13th, uh, on that second Monday, will be our Band of Brothers Bible study. So I hope you can come be a part of that and uh, looking for that. Glad to have our Sunday school. Glad to have uh, those that are uh, the teachers, workers, and everyone. Our classes are small, and we're probably going to be running our buses maybe. And uh, when school starts back, we're kind of working on that, looking at that, and seeing how things go. But And some of the classes, I understand, are small. And you might want to combine with someone else and everything if you just got a couple of students and everything. I don't think you have many in ch children's yeah, church. And uh, Brother Tim, you might want to uh, uh, even bring them over here. And they can hear the word for just a couple of them and let them, and we'll, uh, we'll just uh, have them. So remember that. Choir got back Sunday morning. <laughs> Wasn't that a blessing? And how we enjoyed that and everything. Your brother Jerry Levis, I believe he let him, let him run off, didn't he? And uh, I went to the bathroom maybe I should. But anyway, uh, you remember uh, the services and choir, you remember that? And it was wonderful to have uh, the uh, choir sing on Sunday. So several things going on, I want you to remember. And of course, be praying for the tent revival will be coming up in August. And we've got some flyers we'll be giving out on, on that. And then invite somebody. I know that a lot of times people are a little, a little nervous about coming. If they don't come to church, Tell them to watch us on uh, live stream, and we'll be uh, live streaming the message, and you can hear that and everything. So please do remember those things, and uh, remember the service. We should have a bulletin for you Sunday, so uh, we'll have that, and we're going to pass the offering plate Sunday. So if you don't want to touch it, just let the usher hold it, and so we, we'll be doing that. I told Brother Jerry last night, I said, if you get the COVID-19, we, we, there's no way we can get it now. If we, if we didn't get it over here, we didn't get it. <laughs> And uh, it was close fellowship and uh, everything like that. But uh, uh, hopefully uh, we didn't. If I did, my wife's going to ship me off. And, uh, but uh, do, re do remember to pray for that revival. By the way, the revival's continuing on through uh, Friday night. So they was going to stop Wednesday night tonight. But they're going to go on through Friday night. So pray. And if you can go tomorrow night at 7 or Friday night and just pray for the meeting. And I know it would be a blessing. So we'll be doing some things, as I said. I'm going to be getting a letter out to the different churches to help us on the work day. But if you can help, uh, we'll start on that Saturday morning. I'll say more about it probably Sunday morning, but we'll probably start around 9 o'clock. We'll try to have some food there and everything for everybody like we did last year. Appreciate all the help 
Last year, was it last year or the year before last? Maybe it was the year before last. Uh, we, had to, we had to move a lot of things and we chainsaw and cut up some old pews and I'm telling you, it was some work. And uh, Gabriel, you know, brother, you was in right in the middle of it. Your daddy just grabbed it and go. And I'm telling you right now, them boys will grab it and go. And uh, we appreciate them. And also, uh, some of the other young people were helping. We're so thankful, appreciative that, well, do remember uh, these things and several other things going on and everything. You keep in mind everything. Remember the Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. And then, of course, just remember. And uh, we'll have prayer requests just in a minute and different things. Uh, get your Bible, if you would. And turn to Psalms chapter 34. Psalms chapter 34. And let's work, let's say these verses. Psalms chapter 34. We'll add another verse tonight. Uh, Psalms chapter 34, verses 1 through 5. And uh, so we're adding verse 5. And then we'll add another verse next week now. If you'll say these and you'll work on these, they will they'll bless you. Go to sleep. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? You got any fears? You know why you don't have deliverance? Word of God. The promise, if you'll pray the promise of God, you take the, you say, how do I know the will of God? Pray the word of God. If you'll pray the word of God, you'll find out that you'll know the will of God. He'll help you and direct you through his word to know the will of God. Let's say these together. Verse number one together. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Now, let's say that last one. That's six. This poor man, can you put your name in there? This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. Let's say those five again, okay? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Wonderful verses, I'll tell you, and one. Once you go on down through there and you'll see about the angel Lord, we're going to be dealing with that, some of that tonight, and <clears throat> be a help to you. And you can taste and see the Lord's good. The angel Lord encamped around about them to fear him. And I found out uh, some, by studying today, I thought I had uh, some things all together. Oh, how the Lord opened some wonderful things up just to help me in these scriptures. Let's look, if you will, and... Uh, Again, anybody want to say those? Does anybody want to say those tonight? Uh, three, four, five? I'll give them a try. Go ahead, Brother Green. Brother Green, come right up here and stand and look at that camera if you don't mind. And, uh, and, uh, that won't put you up. And, uh, well, it don't bother me. Amen. I can do his best. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Uh, I saw. They looked unto him. Yeah. They looked unto him and uh, were lighted, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried unto the Lord, and the Lord heard him. And deliver and saved him from all of his troubles. Amen. Isn't that good? Thank you, Brother Green. And uh, let's let's work on those. Let's put those in our heart. And uh, and uh, uh, if we just went over these ten more times, it'd be a blessing to me. Uh, do you think you could get if we went over them twenty more? What if I did it to the end of the service? You think you'd have them then? 
Uh, I tell you, repeating it morning and evening is the key, and it's been such a blessing to me. And I just, I just, uh, I, I try to go over them in the morning, try to go over them in the evening, and uh, just love these scriptures, and they've been such a blessing. But let's look at them, and <clears throat> we're going to be using down to verse number, uh, probably verse ten tonight. And uh, we we probably won't get much further. We may say a little bit about some of the other verses, but. Uh, Let's tell you, follow along. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do like and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And uh, these are such wonderful verses. Look at verse uh, 17. And the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Look at verse number 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. The word say, deliver, you see, you notice in verse 4, it said, deliver them from all fears. And then if you look at verse 6, save them out of all troubles. The same word, save, deliver, same meaning, he saved us from our troubles, our fears, from our uh, afflictions. And of course in verse nine, uh, 19 there, but uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous that the Lord uh, delivereth uh, him out of them all. And he keepeth all his bones. A lot of wonderful alls in there. And uh, we'll look at that. Look at verse 18. The Lord is nigh to them who, notice this, that are, he said here, of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. That's the secret. That's the key to this whole psalm. And, and David here. Now let me just refresh. And, and remember David has run in from Saul. Saul's tried to kill him. I think 22 times he tried to kill him. 22 times. I mean he comes so close to kill him. In fact he even moved in the cave. And David was in that cave. And in Gedi. If you've ever been down through there. Brother Danny you know you saw some of those caves there are big enough to put 20 churches like this inside of You wouldn't believe. And um, uh, there he was in there, and he heard Saul. He went over and cut a piece of his garment. And uh, one of the men wanted to kill Saul. And so he, uh, he, he was after David. David went to Ahimelech. Now that was the priest at Nob. And so he, there he got some bread, some of those sanctified bread. That, and, and, of course, he lied. Said he was on the king's uh, uh, message and, and uh, service and doing it uh, for him. So he got some bread, got the sword of Goliath. And where does he go? Because I'm telling you, Saul was on his heels. Because Doeg looked and he saw him. And he was the James Bond who was watching. And so he said, mm hmm. And so Saul got word and here he come. So David said, I know one place he, he is scared to death of the Philistines. No way was he going into Philistine territory because he, he thought of Goliath and Philistine and the power. So he came maybe pretty close, but he wasn't going. Well, what did David do? David goes in there and read this on uh, 1 Samuel 21. And when he gets there, uh, David, I don't know whether he was carrying that sword or not. I don't know what he did with it. But somebody said, is not that David? Isn't that the one they said that Saul killed his thousands and David his ten thousand? And when David heard this, he, he, he began to think about, uh-oh, what have you done? You jumped out of the frying pan in the fire. And all of a sudden, he said, I'm going to be, be destroyed. And fear, fear running from Saul and, and fear of, of, and he had to run for his life. You say, why the Lord allowed that? I believe God was preparing a champion. I believe God was preparing a man that would stand. But he honored God. He wouldn't touch God's anointing. And of course he got there and all of a sudden he started just drooling, riding on the wall like he was a madman. 
and there was some a stigma about hurting anybody that was not in their right mind. So the king said, get him out of here. I've got enough crazy people. I've got enough mad people around here. Send him off. And so they sent David away. Well, David leaves there, and he goes over to uh, the cave of Begot. And there's where he pins down. And if you notice this psalm, I, I hope it's in your, in your Bible up above, in my Schofield Bible, a psalm of David when he changed his behavior before uh, Abimelech, who drove, away, drove him away, and he departed. Now, remember, Abimelech is the title like Pharaoh. The king's name is not Abimelech. The king's name is Achish. So understand that. So you say, aha, here's a contradiction in the Bible. Explain this. He's King Achish, and now they call him Abimelech. Well, that's like Pharaoh. That's like those uh, in other places where they were uh, called different things. So that was a title given him. So Abimelech here, uh, of course, was the king. And uh, he was, of course, Achish was his name. And so uh, he's pushed David away. David gets over in a cave, and he begins to pin this down. And when he does, now you can read this in Psalm, in uh, 1 Samuel 21, all of a sudden all these people rejected, despised, discouraged, defeated, uh, people that were, were, you know, nobody wanted anything to do with them. They just drew up, came to David. And David, of course, made uh, great warriors and soldiers out of him, and they followed him. Now, this psalm here, and I started out on last week talking about praise, but I want, you to, I want you to think about, and I believe the key here, the theme is how to face your fears. Now, now fear may be your soulmate. <laughs> it may go to bed with you. It may, when that wrong clock goes off in the morning, you, you may hit that thing and hit your feet before your feet hit that floor. Fear grips your heart. But it may not be there. You may can get out of the home. You may can go to work. And it may be down on the job. It may be something that they're downsizing. This is happening. That's happening. And all of a sudden, fear grips your heart. And you see somebody come around, and you see a pink slip going here and a pink slip going there, and you think, oh, I can't lose my job. I've got a family. I have to have a So fear can grip your heart. Or it, or it may be that, that uh, fear uh, is in your marriage. There, there's something not in the relationship that's not right, and and there's some things going on in the home and the family, and uh, you, you're just, you're troubled, and, uh, or it may be a rebellious child. You may think, uh, you know, uh, that, that they're maybe on drugs or alcohol or sexually active, and all these fears grip your heart. Don Wurtson wrote this and, uh, he, in his little devotional book on Psalms 34. Here's what he said. The elusive monster of fear lurks in the shadows waiting to claw my soul to shreds. As one prone to melancholy, I see its ugly face. Often when I'm struggling with emotional stress of difficult relationship, when I'm afraid failure is just around the corner, when success seems to, hard to handle, and on the days when free-floating anxiety is getting the best of me. Did you hear that? Free-floating Anxiety, that is, you don't know what, it's, it's an unnamed fear. It doesn't even have a name, but it's there. It just seems like there's fear here and fear there and fear everywhere. Well, this, this psalm was written that God might help us, and all of us have experienced some fear of one kind or another. And uh, I wrote this down. I said, David, you've learned a lesson I wish I could learn. I wish that if I had gone through, and I have been through some things, and I, I, I hope I could have said what David said here. I thought, oh, Lord, for me to learn, to go through almost being killed by Saul, uh, there in, and he's killed the hero Goliath, their great giant, and, and thought, well, his life, surely he'll be killed there. And, and David comes to the, to the cave of, of a double pair, and he pins down these wonderful words in this psalm. And uh, I want you to see uh, what I call, first of all, the affirmation of David's praise. In these first three verses here, the affirmation of David's praise. He praises God for his goodness. Look at verse 1. I will bless the Lord. Now, if it said most times there, I'd say amen. But I'm telling you right now, is it not hard for us to praise the Lord at all times? 
I can just think of things right now. I mean, it may not be severe things. It may be just, look, that's slow drive. And God may have put that person out there to keep you from getting killed. And a lot of times, or that flat tire, you, you know, might have saved your life. You go up the road, as I did the other day, right there on 11, I saw right there where, uh, 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 what's the, the name of the Amish place surgery? Yoder's. Was Yoder's there, and uh, there's a, a wreck hits head on. And I thought, boy, somebody's hurt bad. That's hamlets and a lot of things. And you know, you see things, and God is protecting. God knows what he's doing. Uh, he praises God for his goodness at all times, regardless of the circumstances. Bless him, regardless of, of what takes place. Notice it's continual praise. He didn't say, well, I'll praise him for this, but now don't let that happen. No, it's continual praise here that we see, not just when it's all going well. Anybody can praise the Lord when it's going well. A fellow put him a wind vane out there, and he had the wind vane, and it was a, it was a, like, like a big rooster. And uh, it, it had north, south, east, west. And, and it had on the, below it, uh, you know, it, it just said, uh, talking about things of God and everything like that, and how uh, that everything was okay. And he said, is God so fickle that, that, uh, that it doesn't, I mean, no matter which way the wind blows, he said, uh, well, I'm going to tell you right now, God is good and God can be trusted no matter how the wind blows. And thank God we can trust the Lord. So here we find the affirmation. He praises God for his goodness. And then he praises God in verse 2 for his greatness. My soul, my soul, the deep heart of me shall make her boast. Oh, he said, I just want to boast. I, I just want to praise him. I just want to thank him. I, I just want to honor and glorify him. Boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So here he praises, we find the greatness. And uh, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. David wrote these words when he was afraid. He was, he was afraid for his life. He was fearful. And he said, I need to write these because I, there are going to be other people go through what I've been through. And they're going to, they're going to know it's okay to be afraid. But, but he wrote later, what time I'm afraid, I'll trust in the Lord. And so that's the key uh, to this. Uh, he wants us to know when believers in God face our fears, God is sovereign. That's what I want you to see. God is sovereign here, and he wants us to know he's in charge. He's in control. Uh, you've heard me quote this poem so many times. My father's way may twist and turn. My heart may throb and ache, but in my soul I'm glad to know he maketh no mistake. And, and when I can trust him, when I, when I keep tracking, when I don't understand, there's times in honest before the Lord, and I just, I just text something out this week to a, uh, to a dear person, and, and I said, you know, if, if, you, if, if the well's deep enough, if the well's deep enough, you can see the stars at midday, if the well's deep enough. But you know what? God must bring some, some of us, if we've ever been to that deep darkness, we ought to thank God, because God showed you something that light and don't, listen, don't, what you see in the light, don't in effect, don't let the darkness take away what God has showed you in the light. And I'm afraid many people do. They, they've had things in their life uh, that God has showed them. And, uh, and uh, you know, God has blessed them. And God has taken care of them in that. And so you find here, uh, he says here, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And uh, God's in charge. David couldn't help but boast, brag, praise, worship. He makes God big and, and, uh, uh, in, in his heart and his mind. But something else, not only does he praise God for his goodness and his greatness, but he praises God for his glory. Look at verse 3. Oh, magnify. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. And he goes on here and gives us some wonderful things. And I, God had revealed himself to me. And so David said here, I just want to magnify him. I just want to praise him. I just want to bless him. I, I want to exalt him. Now, you know this, um, uh, when, when you've got a, a, teles a telescope, it brings things near. But when you have uh, a microscope, it makes things bigger. And that's what David said. I can't make God big enough. I, I can't tell you how good he is, how big he is, how great he is. But here, 
Oh, he wants to tell us about the glory. And uh, just when I need him most, I thought about that song. You know, a telescope brings him closer, brings him near. Uh, that old song, Just When I Need Him Most. Just when I need him most. Jesus is near to comfort and cheer just when I need him most. Oh, how that is. Just when I need him most. Uh, he comes, he comforts, he cheers. Uh, you, you think, well, God, where are you? He's there. You, you, you just hang around, and God will make himself uh, uh, real to you, and you'll understand that. So we see this wonderful truth here. And so when we, when we can't... Uh, we can praise God and bless God and boast. And that's what he's saying here. When everything goes wrong, people set up and uh, pay attention and look and say, you know what? Now, David just went through almost being killed many times by Saul and being released by the king down there. And God spared his life with the bear, the lion, and so many other different things. And he, of course, took care. So people set up and pay attention. How can they do that? I thought about a guy named Dennis Palmer. He lived in Manitoba, Canada. He had all kinds of sickness, all kinds of problems. He was bed fast. I think they could help him get up in a wheelchair. But he had all kinds of problems. He had bone disease. Uh, he had uh, uh, all kinds of problems and, and uh, physical problems. And, and uh, he was just, uh, just so, he had a seizure, a bad seizure. And they called an ambulance. Ambulance come picked him up. And on the way to the hospital there, the ambulance slid into a gravel truck. And here's a poor old fellow. He was, he was, he's had a, a bone disease. He had all kinds of sickness and, and everything. And, and uh, one of the preachers in the air went to see him and went up to the hospital uh, the next day to see him. And there he was. He looked like a mummy. I mean, he had his arms and his body and his legs. And, and when he looks at him, he, he looked over. And I want you to be turned into a scripture verse. Keep your place there. Because I, I don't know if I could have said this. This is, all, this is almost more than a, a human being can say, but oh, what a testimony. Turn to Isaiah 63. And he looked over at him and he said, Brother Dennis, what are, what are you thinking? He said, I don't know what made me ask that, but here's a poor fellow. Looks like he's uh, just about to give up the ghost. And he said, what are you thinking right now? And he looked at him and he said to him, what you read in chapter 63 and verse 7, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed to, on us and the, the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. He said, when, I, when he got through, I was weeping. He said, I looked at that poor man, uh, an invalid almost, uh, broken bones all over his body, sick, and, and to say, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. Could you have said that? Could I have said that? If you come in there and you saw me like that, uh, you know, I, I, I might grunt out something and, you know, and uh, I don't know, but oh, what a testimony. And, uh, and you know what? People had to notice that. People had to see that. And people had to be encouraged by seeing that happen. Now, the first thing we saw there, we talked about the affirmation of David's praise. Now, I want you to look at the admittance, the admittance of David's plight. He admits his plight. Look, if you will, at verse 4 and 5. And... Uh, he says this, go back to chapter 34. He said in verse 34, uh, uh, verse number 4, I sought the Lord. David said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. In other words, he said, I received help from God. I sought him. And you know what? When you seek him, you'll find help. When you seek him, uh, you, you'll find he, he heard me. Oh, to have a hearing ear. I, I read uh, the first thing after it said, If my people which are called my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What's the number one thing? Not hear the land. Not forgive their sin. Hear. Hear. I will hear, the Lord said. I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. Oh, to have God's ear. To know God hears. 
And so here we see he got his help and he got hearing. And, and of course, thank God he got healing here. And uh, the Lord touched him. Now he looked unto him and uh, the Bible said here he was light. Now the term here, uh, in other words, the term light there means I won't pull a veil over. I won't try to hide. Uh, 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 in other words, he said all these things. I'm not going to try to hide my fears. Uh, you know, uh, there are people that are weak and fearful and they try to cover it up. And, uh, and you know, we can, in fact, I sometimes am that way. I sometimes, I, I sometimes, it, it's kind of hard to say, God, I'm weak. God, I'm fearful. God, I'm helpless. Oh, it, it seems like, especially men. Now, I believe women are a little bit easier because they see the need. And, and I believe men do too in some instances, but, but uh, we think we're too strong. And, but David cried and he said, I'm, not, I'm poor. I'm poor. And you, and you know what, David, here, and you think about it, and uh, the only kind of people God can help are those who are weak. You know what, David, you, you know what uh, Paul said? Paul said, when I was weak, then was I, 2 Corinthians 12. He didn't say when I was strong. Oh, no. He said when I was weak. When I couldn't do it, God could. As long as I can do it, God will let me do it. And I tell you, sometimes God allows us to even have a little bit of fruit. But most of the time, it's all in vain. It's like Peter fishing without, and he caught no fishes. And the Lord, I said, now, Peter, do this in the, at, the, at my word. And he said, Lord, at thy word, now, I know fish don't bite in the middle of the day, and uh, we've been out all night, we've caught nothing, but at thy word, we'll drop the net. And they did. And the Bible said they caught so many fishes, they could not bring them in. And so he looked into him, he was lightened. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think in our fatigue and sometimes our frustration, our failures and everything, we just think, well, what more can I do? My wife can tell you, I'm a type of person. I just go, go, go. I mean, I, I, this thing has blown my mind about this COVID. I like to go. I don't like to sit. I'm not a stay-home person. I like to visit. I like, I like to be able to go if I want to go. And, and you know, uh, but, but here, uh, there's times that we have to realize we can't do it in ourselves. Uh, you know, I've, I've almost said, well, if they don't do it, Many times in the church as a pastor, you find out many people won't do their job. So it falls back. The buck stops. And you have a lot of people don't do their job. And when they don't do their job, somebody, and you don't, you don't pay them, you can't call them on the carpet and say, now this is a warning, I've written you up. Uh, and, and sometimes you don't want to offend and you don't want to hurt, but uh, it's, it's, it's just like uh, that uh, their, their job don't mean they're really not getting paid, but they are. They're getting paid. It's going to be out of this world what they're going to get if they serve the Lord with, uh, with the right attitude and the like spirit. So because when you're weak, then are you strong. And if we'd only realize that, that God uses weakness. And God uses weak people and weak things. And despise not thou uh, the day of small things. And God takes little raindrops and he, and, and he makes rivers. And God takes people like us. All them little toothpicks come out of one big old tree. But I'm going to tell you, God uses things. So he said here, uh, we, we find in this, uh, admit, David admitted uh, his plight. And then the answer for David's prayer. Look at verse 6. This poor man, not this strong man, not this robust man, not, not this mighty warrior. Hey, I killed a bear. Hey, I killed a lion. Hey, I killed a giant. By the way, I saw one fellow said he was 10 and a half feet. The other said he's 11 feet. And I was trying to figure it out. I think I got a little over nine foot, maybe nine, nine. But I might not be figuring right there. But, but anyway, how would, you like to, how would you like to run up on a fellow could take his elbow and put it up on top of the backboard? Up on top. Not on the go, but up on top. I'm telling you right now, uh, he was... In fact, his, his, all his armor, what he wore, weighed 200 pounds. 200 shekels, all he had on. And a spear uh, and a sword 
only thing that sword got is his head cut off. <laughs> and uh, but but here we find David says here in verse number six, this poor man cried. He cried. The Lord heard him and saved him, delivered him out of all his troubles, out of all his fears. Go to Mark that in verse three, four. All his fears. Look at verse number uh, six. All his troubles. Look at verse number. Uh, uh, look at verse number 19. All of his afflictions. And, and see here, uh, he's trying to say he, he can't just deliver you from some of them. And most of them, he can deliver you from all of them. And sometimes trusting the Lord and letting him have his will and way is difficult. So uh, pray God's promises. And I mentioned that just to start. As we believe God's word, pray God's word. Oh, I've got his word. Uh, Jeremiah 33, 3. I love that verse. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. I call it God's phone number. Call unto me, I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I can't hardly say that verse without thinking about that old song uh, that God's uh, central is never busy, always on the line. You can talk to heaven almost any time. Built by God the Father for his loving own. You can talk to Jesus on the royal telephone. So here's an answer for David's prayer. Look at verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. Look at verse 16. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, and have cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Verse 17. The righteous cry. Oh, they cry. And he said, The Lord heareth and delivereth uh, them out of all their troubles. He hears, he sees, he knows what you're going through. He sees. In fact, sometimes God designed that. God, God brought that about, and sometimes we find, I, I'm not saying God caused the COVID-19, but uh, God certainly, if he didn't cause it, he allowed it. And uh, some people are in uh, chastening because uh, they're out of the will of God, like Jonah. Some people are, are, should say, in the storm of chastening, and then some people are in the storm because they're in the will of God. He sent those disciples right in that storm. But Bob, you imagine that. Here, he loves them, but he sends him, and they Lord said, Lord, care us not, we perish. He come walking on the water. And he come out, they thought he was a ghost. And when they saw him walking on the water, they thought he was a phantom or a spirit. And of course, when he come through the upper room there, they looked around and they, again, he said, here, touch my hand. He said, uh, my side. And uh, of course, we find there. Oh, he answers prayer. And thank God for this prayer he answers. And the righteous cry. He said again in verse number uh, 6, this poor man cried. He cried. Oh, David said, I was just a poor man. I was a helpless man. I was a, if, if the king, if, if somehow, uh, and, and this was a foolish time in David's life, a fearful time in David's life, but somehow he escaped that. And here he writes down in that cave, he pins down this song to tell you and me, hey, you can have these times too of trouble. You can have these times too of fear. You can have these times too of affliction. But thank God for answered prayer. And then I want you to see here the angel for David's, uh, the angel for David's protection. Look at verse 7. Now you don't read this in the New Testament. Nowhere in the New Testament you read of the angel of the Lord. Now why is that? Now three times in Psalms you read that. Look at verse 7. The angel of the Lord encountered the round about them that fear him and delivered them. Now the reason why you don't read that in the New Testament, this is a Christophanes or a Theophanes. That is an Old Testament appearing of Jesus Christ. Hey, I'm coming. You'll find it many other places like with Abraham and with uh, the parents of Samson. And, and so in the New Testament, the reason why you don't have the angel of the Lord, no need for the angel of the Lord. You've got Christ. We don't need, the, 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 the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is Christ in the New Testament. Same person. So he didn't begin at Bethlehem. So a lot of people said, well, you know, I don't believe in the pre-existence of Christ. Well, friend, you don't know your Bible. That there is the pre-existence of Christ. He didn't begin it. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made in the creation. I, I'm telling you what, he's always been. Amen. And thank God for that wonderful truth that we have. But here the angel, 
uh, uh, here protecting. And we read that several times uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord. But not one time will you read that in the New Testament because we don't say uh, uh, there, lo, I'm with you always, the angel of the Lord. No, we say that that's Christ. Uh, we don't say he'll never leave me nor forsake him, the angel of the Lord. Uh, we, we don't say, uh, as uh, some other scriptures talk about, yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because the angel of the Lord. Now that's Old Testament, but it's Christ. It's Christ who is with us. And so that's the wonderful truth there. And that's the reason why uh, he said the angel of the Lord, uh, it, it, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, and he delivereth and delivereth every one of them, delivereth them. And then verse 8, O oh, taste. And here, I'll give you the last thing here, the assurance of David's provision. What's the assurance of David's provision? He says this in, uh, uh, in verse 8, O oh, taste, just taste. You know, I hear people say, I don't believe that. Well, if I told you that there's no such thing as apple pie, and you just eat an apple pie, and it was in your stomach, and you almost could taste the flavor in your mouth. But I said, there's no such thing as apple pie. You know what you'd say? I know there is. You know why? You've tasted. Oh, taste. Oh, taste. We have tasted. Jesus tasted dead for every man. We've tasted. We know what he says here. Oh, taste and see the Lord. He's good. Oh, how good. How wonderful. He is blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So here in these verses, look at verse number 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no wont to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. He said, I'll tell you, you won't be hungry. I'll take care of you. Uh, you will be fed. You will. David said, I was once young, but I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor God seen begging bread. And so notice these, and I pointed them out before, but look at verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh, look at verse number 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Look at verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. No want. Uh, Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all you, not your wants, but sometimes he gives our wants, don't he? But he'll supply all our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we see from our fears, verse number uh, four, he says here, uh, from all of our fears. Look at verse number six, he says here, from all our troubles, all his troubles. L look at verse 17, again he says, all their troubles, all their troubles. So from our fears, verse four, from our troubles, verse six and 17, and then look at verse 19. And in verse 19, he, he says here, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them from them all. Every one of them has got the word all. You say, well, I'm going through this right now. Well, just uh, sometimes it's like a storm. Uh, the Christian folks, sometimes you're just going in. Sometimes you're in the middle. Sometimes you're coming out. But, but God is going to be with you in a storm. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He's on board. And so we, we find here, uh, that, that these afflictions, troubles, fears, uh, the secret is found in verse number 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Now there are four psalms that David uses the word broken heart. Uh, turn your page, just, just, just keep your page right there. Look at Psalms 51. And, and you'll read again in Psalms 32, but I'll just read this one here, where he says there in Psalms chapter 51, and uh, David said there uh, that he, God will not despise a broken heart. And uh, the, verse 17, Psalm 51, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, oh God, thou will not despise. And David prayed four different times. He talks about a broken heart and, and a contrite spirit, a, a spirit that God can deal with, a spirit that God, it's almost like, uh, plastic or something you could you can you could turn it you can you can mold it you can make it you can shape it. it's like the potter on the wheel oh he said here uh, that God is works with those who have and David's heart was broken 
And, and David had a contract spirit. And, and David come to this place and, and God, by the way, this is an, an acrostic psalm, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and all of them you see here in this 22, and you see it other places, but this is one of those, uh, in other words, I, I was reading a, a book the other day that had the little, uh, well, go uh, look at Psalms 119. And uh, you, you've seen this, but I'll just take this and we'll have prayer time. Psalms uh, 119. And look at verse number one. Now notice the Aleph. It looks almost like an N. Do you have it up at the top of your Bible? Right over the Aleph. Aleph, that's the first letter of the Hebrew. He's Alpha and Omega. Aleph. And so we find here is the first of the Hebrew. Alpha and Omega is the Greek. But here, the, the Aleph and then the Beth. The Beth, it, it's almost like a, uh, a, a, a backward uh, shape like, kind of like a... Uh, Beth means house. It's what the word means, house. And then you see the word Daleth. It means door. That, that word, you see it right above verse 25. Right above verse 9 is Beth. Right above verse uh, number 25 is the word Daleth. Uh, Gamel is right there. And you see these uh, different letters through there. And you find all 22 of these letters. And all of them about the word of God. This is the greatest uh, psalm, greatest exposition, the Word of God in all the Bible. And David does uh, goes through those wonderful. Uh, he goes through those wonderful alphabet, the twenty-two. Now, what we're doing in the twenty-six letters of the uh, of the alphabet of the Holy Spirit, uh, there's we, we have more, and we're going to probably take about three of those, and we'll start doing those. May do them on Sunday night, but we'll be doing those and share them. By the way, we won't have service Sunday morning. I might mention that Sunday morning. We will. Sunday night, we won't. <laughs> and um, so for Father's Day, Sunday morning, of course, be Father's Day. It'll be a wonderful time. But I hope this psalm will be a blessing to you and, and help you. And uh, 16 times the word Lord is mentioned. Oh, David's just blessing. He's praising. He's boasting. He's magnifying. He's exalting. Uh, he's giving God glory, uh, honor, praise, uh, loving kindness, all and, and you say, could I have done that if I had been in David's shoes? Could, could I have done what Brother Dennis Palmer did there, laying there in the hospital, and say what he said from some, God's loving kindness, God's tender mercies, God, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us bless and praise his name together. May, may this psalm be a blessing to you and a help to you as you look at it and study it. And they said, Father, we love you. And we praise you, dear God. We thank you for this wonderful, wonderful psalm. It's been a blessing to my heart to study it. Uh, Lord, to meditate upon it. And I, I think the art of meditation is almost gone today. For to sit and meditate on something, and it seems like we've got to have TV or radio, we've got to have something going, and, and we can't meditate, we can't sit there and think, I will. Bob Ferguson will bless the Lord at all times. And uh, his, his praise, God's praise, shall be in my mouth. And, and if it's in my mouth, it had to be in my heart. And a lot of people say, well, I, I, it's in my heart, but it needs to come out of our mouth. And we need to have praise. We need to have thanksgiving. We need to lift up the wonderful name of our Lord. God help us to take this psalm and apply it in our troubles and our difficulties as David did here. And he was afraid. He said, I was fearful. I was, I, I believe today that David would have used the term, I was scared. I was absolutely uh, 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 about to panic and, and lose my, but, but the Lord delivered me. God took care of me. And thank God for this wonderful song. Thank God for this wonderful pen that David wrote 77 of the songs. At least we know that many, maybe more. God, thank you for these wonderful truths. Lord, help me to apply them in my heart. Help me not just get up here and preach them, but help me to practice them. Help them to be a, a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. God, help me to use them in my walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me... Uh,